That was Flynn. La 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 Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter uh, was me doing a very bad rendition of Time to Change, uh, which is a song that is in the Brady Bunch movie. Uh, and I also coughed in the middle of that, not, not because I wanted to be dramatic or mention COVID, just because I actually coughed. So we're going to now continue what we had last time. Um, so which was, we'd gotten pretty far in terms of loading data and creating our own functions. And uh, we're almost ready now to um, do some more stuff with data. So let's go ahead and we'll get a fresh start in the sense we're going to restart. Oh, that did not seem good. Okay, what directory am I in? This one, okay. All right, something weird just happened. Okay, but we'll go ahead and do this nice and simple. And... I guess, let's see how much of this we, we want to kind of separate out the portion that I hope to turn into a library one day. Um, so let's go ahead. I have BC gitted this so we can do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and let's do this. And now in theory, I should have probably put it, where the, why, where am I not putting a dollar sign? Oh, right here. Um, okay. This is kind of bad because if I run this again, the uh, list will be reversed again, which is actually the opposite of what I want. Um, so I do want the list reversed exactly once. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, and that's right. Um, ever since I changed it, the key here... Okay, that's not good. Stand by. Please stand by. Okay, that's not good at all. So that clearly did not do what I th expected it to do. Um, let's go ahead and make a little delimiter here. Library and other non-specific um, functions loads. That should be generic enough to make no, no sense. Okay, so clearly something terrible has happened. Uh, let's see if Matt's been defined correctly. He appears to have been uh, the matrix. Um, a BC list to string I2. That should be... So let's see what deaths looks like right now. Let's do a little bit of array info on death. Deaths. Ooh. Cowabunga, dudes. So what the hell happened there? Um... Let's see what the hell that is. Okay, why didn't this get defined? Hmm. That's not cool. Unless I mess something. Oh, did I? Yes, I did. I decided to put an underscore in it to separate my name out from the remainder of the function, but I forgot to change it everywhere. So BC list, yeah. <coughs> okay, maybe I'm maybe I do have the COVID. I don't know. The COVID. The coronavirus. Let's try this one more time, and this time we're going to do it maybe correctly. And, uh, yep, once again, I need to put a dollar sign there so I don't... Because I don't... Wait, 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 wait. Where do I need a dollar sign? Hey. Okay, that's kind of weird. I did not expect to get any... Oh, is this... Oh. This might be where I need it. So I'm going to do this again. I, I'm going to try to get it so it doesn't uh, print out anything we don't want. And for right now, we don't want any of this. Except, if I can do this, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, it's not correctly reversed. But aside from that, it's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at Sweden. Sweden, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what went wrong here? <coughs> and I think what we found is array info deaths, actually the first two elements of it are stupid. Um, because they're not keys to deaths, but they're rather special things. 
uh, namely the uh, the word hashed or the the key hash number two, the depth of the array or something like that. Okay, I'm going to mute you guys while I uh, blow my nose as I die of COVID. So please stand by. And we are back. Okay. Um, so we did actually figure that out, that the um, first two elements of array info um, are stupid. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create another function called BC keys. Um, let's see. And maybe this time I'll actually document it. The keys of an associative array, which is basically going to be the same as array info, but minus the first two elements. So let's call it L for array, or should we call it R for array? In fact, we should probably call this, I'll leave it like this, but using L as a variable is not a great idea. Okay, so what we want here is array info of array, and then there are functions that will let you select all but the first two elements. Uh, one of the list functions that does this. Um, Oh, no, that's not what I want. I want the functions for list, not the function that is named functions. So I think it's a, it's a very simple thing like take or append, so cons, cutter. There's no cutter for this, actually. Create list, delete. Ooh. Mm. Uh, okay. We could just delete the first two elements, but let's. there's a better way to do this, I think. Um... I think last n is what we want. Um, okay. And actually, it might just be rest. Um, um, rest. I think what we want is, yeah, with the first n elements removed. So this is just going to be... Um, it is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so we're going to skip it. Okay, so this is going to be just whichever the order here is rest um, with the first n elements removed, so it is just going to be rest for info 2. And over here, um, instead of doing this on, on, let's see, yeah, instead of doing this on the array info, we'll just do it on the keys, which should actually work. I, assuming that I, did I define, oops, 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 gotta be careful here. I do need to actually define this. And I think I'm missing a, um, oh, that's what I meant to do. Okay, I think that'll work. And so now we can do this. Um, okay, um, deaths is not an array. Okay, hang on. Array info, okay, hang on. BC keys of this argument is rest of array info, comma, two, all right, deaths, Let's do an array info on deaths. Let's do this. Okay, so that should work. Array info AR is not an array, so something is wrong. Um, <coughs> huh. Rest array info ARR matches this, comma two, and it is a set equal, so it should be. See, this is kind of weird. R equals deaths. That should work, unless R is a special word or something. So deaths, okay. So what does this do? Um, 
Okay, the equal here is not set equal to because that's not how um, Maxima works. Restoration function, uh, this should be fine. Oh, well, let's just do this like this. This won't work because ARR really isn't defined. But now if I put in deaths here, it should be groovy. Um, so I don't know what to do here. Uh, let's see. Rest ray info error two. Um, the only thing I can think of is I may have to evaluate array info ARR before I can do this. But let's see if this works. Um, uh, fell off the end. That's not cool. Okay. All right, so I'm not seeing why this isn't working. I'm wondering if um, functions on lists have to have a special property, but not really, because they just did it up here. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe uh, ARR is a list and not an array, because I, I think I did some weird stuff with it. Let's see if we can, um, what is this? Oh, this works with the lists, okay. With its first n elements removed, um, the first argument may be a list matrix or other expression, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so the only thing I can think of is maybe. Well, let's do this with L again. Maybe, maybe I somehow messed this up, and ARR is a reserved word or something. So, and also I, there's a possibility that I screwed this up and define BC keys more than once. So let's go ahead and do a kill BC keys. That's one of the bigger problems here is defining something multiple times. It gets weird. Okay, now we're just going to do BC keys of deaths. L is not an array. It doesn't have to be. Oh, maybe it does have to be because uh, array info only applies to arrays. Um, uh, but I mean, if I can array info it, if I can do an array info on it, which I apparently can, um, is that a list? It should be. Is that an array? I don't know what the function is for testing for an array, so I don't know. Um, but it should work with if it's just a list, right? So what are, what's wrong here? List to string set equal to. Uh, that should that should be very good. Okay, let's actually take the advice that it gives us every time we screw something up, um, and set debug mode to true. Okay. Well, that doesn't help us at all. What is L? What is deaths? Array info of deaths. Okay. I think I know what's wrong, actually, believe it or not. Um, we need to actually evaluate L here. I think that's what does this. I don't know if it does, though. Uh, because otherwise we're getting too much... Um, oh, no, no, that didn't like that at all. Okay. All right. Well, fadoodle. Um, I think I think I need to do an eval in here somewhere. Is the problem? Um, let's try this. Let's let's make something a little bit simpler. Oh, and also let's um, let's unturn off debug mode because it's really annoying. And also, let's just say bc keys of l set equal to array info of l. So if that simpler function fails, or we'll just call it bc test, because we're just testing. So what is bc test of deaths? Aha! So the problem here is um, l is not an array. I guess because when I say L equals deaths, whatever the hell this means, 
it's not doing an array copy. Um, so, and I guess for the one other one that I had, it wasn't really such an issue uh, because I just used it very simply. Uh, so array info of L. So I need, so what if I did this? Eval array info of L. No, L is still not an array. Okay, let's take a look here at the maxima. So let's take a look at functions here. Um, I'm going to try to just find it by searching for it. Um, now let's just look for how to write a function. Um, so I think evaluation is what's going to be weird here. Prevents evaluation. Um, uh, let's see. Operator double quote modifies evaluation input to be substituted. Um, No, nope, still not what I want. I want the opposite of this. I want to evaluate my arguments. Eval e e the expression... Okay, that's not exactly what I want. Okay, hang on. Mm hmm. Okay, let's see if this does what I want. This is ev. So let's see what this does. So suppose I say, oh, I did that. Um, but I actually, I meant array info on L. And no, that's not doing what I want. Um, so it does not actually apply. Okay, so that's not quite what I want. I get, I get the feeling I'm close, though. Um, eval. Is eval what I want? Maybe. Eval is supposed to eval stuff, though. Um, so why did that not work? Oh, it's a special symbol. That's why it's not really a, a function. OK, not quite there. EV flag, EV fun. Aha! Uh -huh. Option variable, special symbol, special symbol. Okay. So this, this is being non-groovy here. Um, I don't even know if I need eval, but I need something that basically says uh, run. So this, this does not work, which is interesting. Um, now I could turn this into a module, which we looked at yesterday. Um, and I forgot how to do that, but hopefully I have it written down here somewhere. I probably don't. Okay, Lambda does a uh, block, 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 block. Okay. Um, and block has a special kind of a notation here. Um, it takes a list of variables that you're considering private. Good block, no arrays, and then array info L. Don't know if that'll actually work. Oh, it still doesn't like the fact that L is not a... Um, is not an array. Um... Well, let me try something else here. Let's just say BC test is equal to. Let's see if this even works. And just make sure that BC test is. That's. What does this do? Probably nothing. Um, I think there's a fun def. Mm, yeah, fun def BC test. Hopefully, I haven't defined it more than once. Okay, that looks fine. Um, BC test of deaths. Is that a list? 
And I get the feeling it is not going to be correct. But deaths itself is a list. No, it's not. That's disappointing. Wait. I know I've done this. Okay. And I know I can do this. Yeah. No one's died in Yemen, by the way. A few people have died in Saudi Arabia. Okay. So deaths... It is an array, but it's not an array. Well, I mean, I, can, I know I can do this array info to it, so the fact that I can't... Uh, and I'm pretty sure the syntax is correct, because they've used it with other things. I wonder if I can do this. So let's see if length, deaths has a length, which it probably should. No, it does not. Is it length? No, it's his length. Um, okay. So whatever the hell death is, I've kind of made it into a weird thing. Um, no? Hit me, Tito. I don't know what death is anymore. I mean, I know what death is. I just don't know what death is. Okay. So this works fine. Um, although it doesn't at any point, I don't think at any point tries to... Uh, let's see. Hmm. Let's see what I can do here. BC test L set equal to block return L. Let's see what that does. Return L. So now BC test of deaths. Okay, can I do an array info on that sucker? Probably yes. No. So actually, can I even do this? Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. So what if I say test equals? So not equals colon one two three four. Uh, and test is this. So now can I say BC test test? Okay, that seems to work too. So the problem seems to be with associative arrays. Oh. Okay, I think I get it. Um. So are we saying the return value of array info is not itself an array? I mean, we might be. Okay, so let's try this now. BC test. Uh, let's just try this. It's equal to L. So very simple. Test is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. BC test of test is 1, 2, 3, 4. And then let's try this is equal to the length of L. Now that's too easy, actually. Um, Uh, can I do array info of L? This could be a bad thing. Um, so array in L is not an array. How do I turn it into an array? What is it actually? Is it like list info or something? No, listify. That sounds like a fun thing. Just turn it into a list. Is there an arrayify? Array make? Does that create an array? Um okay, no. 
So what do I have here is I can take the array info of it, but once I send it in as an argument, I cannot. Now I'm going to bet you anything I can do this, and this is going to be hideous. And this will work, but now it's a memoizing function, which I di really didn't want. Um, just really, really don't like me, do you? Okay. All right, BC two hundred. I mean, I guess the question is, is array info maybe is defined funny? Um, because I certainly can't do deaths four, for example, because deaths is an associative array. Um. Okay. Alrighty. Let's let's see if we have a more on an associ. I don't know if they call it an associative array, but no, they they call it a. Um, so they really do, I guess, distinguish between um, arrays and lists. So this is this is the kind of magic way to do this. Um. So what can we do? So array, this is creates an array. Um, returns information about the array A. The argument A may be a declared array, hashed array, memoizing function, or subscripted function. For declared arrays, um, for undeclared arrays, hashed arrays, returns a list compi comprising the atoms of okay. K. The values are returned by list array. OK. Array and info and list array are applied to an undeclared array. So I guess the only weird thing he here is I can't do a set equal. I need something bigger than set equal to create a function. Um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. OK. 
So I'm still a little bit confused. Uh, but let me try one more thing here, and then we might actually end up Googling. So let's say BC test equal to block. And maybe I misunderstood. Maybe L is the... Um, So BC test of deaths. It's pretty macabre. I'm using the word deaths all over the place. Um, nope, still doesn't like the fact, still doesn't think of L as an array. And the only thing I can think of is maybe a defined L somewhere else, but I didn't. So let's just call it something else. Let's call it um, LX. Yeah something more fundamentally wrong here um, and looking at this example yeah and even that's actually only for a temporary variable the functions and apropos these are for help which we need but not in the sense of the word uh, command line new no. I and mean, maybe but again not the problem we're having oh, hang on Info lists, okay. Labels, line them, my options, blah, 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 prompt, quit, read. Read only. Uh, display, no, let's go back up here. Command line, data types and structures. Expressions. Operators, evaluation. Yeah, we were looking at this earlier. Um, oh, that's actually pretty good. The value of expression to be substituted in. <coughs> Excuse me. So that would mean maybe this. I'm sorry. Um, actually, I probably need to do a kill BC test just because I've mucked around with it so much. And then do this. And then, viola, nothing will happen. No. Yeah. I mean, it's not an array, but you can still apply array info to it. Um... I wonder if you can, um, <coughs> excuse me, argzel is not an array either, okay, um, okay, well, let's look at some array functions then, maybe, maybe we need to figure out what the hell an array actually is. <coughs> Before I die of Corona. Array functions. <coughs> okay, that's getting a little bit bad there. Hang on. <coughs> okay, I think I've got it under control now. Um, array functions, um, okay, I guess I need to go over here to arrays, because <coughs> it might be like functions for array, okay, um, creates a blank array, array apply, array info, um, Turn something that's not an array into an array. Array make. Uh, no. List of arrays that have been allocated. Let's take a look at that, actually. It seems kind of interesting. <coughs> okay, that's kind of weird in the sense that... No, oh, so deaths is an array. You're saying that right here. Um, you're saying L is not an array. Okay. Um, so 
So that's kind of weird. Huh. So this appears to work. I mean, it won't work with deaths because deaths is a not a regular. Um. Now hang on. Okay, so that got evaluated correctly. So what is array info? Ooh, what? Now test array definitely is an array, a piece of crap. All right. What does list array do? I, do I mean? Okay. <coughs> so this thing has some trouble with the concept of what an array is. Uh, I mean, these things have values. It's an array. Uh, unless test has another meaning. Let's just try temp 1808. Okay, and then I want array info on temp 1808, just in case test had a special meaning. Temp 1808 is not an array, but at the same time it is an array. Okay. Let's get serious with this. Temp 1808, 1 equals 7. Allocate a new property hash table. That's interesting. That might have something to do with something. So now give me the array info on this. Okay, cool. Oh, it's a hashed array. It's not a regular array. So can I now get a... Um, If I define BC test to be array info, I get the feeling this isn't going to work. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at how we define um, list functions on lists in Maxima. And I will use the older spelling of it so we don't get confused. Um, Okay, a lot of this is um, and let's go to our favorite site, Stack Exchange, which does not have a specific maxima. Um, okay. <coughs> okay. Um Number, this is gonna get ugly. All right, I rested on this tutorial. Oh man. Um. Um. That's not really that helpful. I got ten points for. Uh. Okay. I don't know how I did that, but okay. Very cool. Um. All right, list functions maxima site stack exchange dot com. Let's get busy. Um, <coughs> okay. Uh, you can get the part function. Uh, maybe I'll look up the error that message that I'm getting. Um, and unfortunately, this is going to get the word maxima is going to be always correct. Always something else here. So let's do this. Um, how can you prove that a function has no... Ta -ta? <sighs> Proving the symbolic computer algebra. Okay. Um, let's just go straight to our maxima. Um, kind of wondering how. Oh yeah, let's do what I wanted to do, which is BC test L set equal to array info L. Um, R 
Bob, well, let's see, R, we'll do our standard example. Apple, nope, that's red. Orange is orange. And that should be enough. So now I can do array info R and get some information out of it. And now when I do VC test of R, I get array info is not an array. That's probably not super helpful. But let's see what we can do with it. It's not an array, and I'm not going to put in maxima, but I'm probably going to have to. Um, no, I did not mean that. Um, and maxima. Okay. <laughs> We're really, really going down here. Subscripted functions as arguments. That might be what we're trying to use get inside of um, arrays. Ooh, that might be the way to do it, actually. Um, but before in Mathematica, we would call them down values. Um, but let's see. Wow, not many, not many hits here. Uh, blah, 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 blah is not an array. Um, ooh! <coughs> um, quotes its argument, so that's why we're having problems. Um, So you need to use the apply command, apparently. Ah, that, that explains it. Um, so now if we just do this, gotta be careful here. Apply. Nope, whoa. Second argument must be a list. Found, okay, hang on, VC test. And can I do array info on R? Okay, so that does work. Um, so do I mean to do actually this? That's gonna be really strange. Um, So that's not quite right either because that attempts to apply array info to a bunch of arguments, which is not quite there. Um, oh, god damn it! This finally, okay, for the user's convenience, it fucks you over so hard that it hurts. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and define array info two? Uh, that took forever, and that was that's really annoying. Um, per, we're going to go ahead and quote this reference here. A version of array info that does not quote its arguments. So we're going to call that array info two l set equal to apply array. <laughs> I think we can do it like this, array info to L. So, and then we can do this, and then we can just restart this real quick. Um, and then, God willing, uh, let's go ahead and, whoa, 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 your mama. Nope, too far. Let's see if all this can be run all at once. Da, 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 da. So deaths of US is yay. Okay, hang on. Um, what are BC keys of deaths? This better work. Yes, finally. And I think that's an array, and we could probably take its fifth element if we wanted to, and we can. And so now, finally, this didn't work. Um, <coughs> okay, and I'm beginning to wonder if this actually, let's see, 
deaths of this push this, but I think this actually just um, BC keys of death. Okay, that's actually kind of weird now that I think about it. What does that do anything? Maybe it doesn't. Um. I mean, the weird thing is it might just actually... Um, well, let's take a look at Death's Angle. I don't think that's reversed the, the values, because I don't think that's even what I asked it to do. So what I meant to do here is... Um, Death's of I is becomes Reverse Death's of I don't. I didn't mean to reverse the, um, the keys. That didn't even make sense. So let's see if this now works. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, unless I've done it, no, and that should that should be fine. U.S. Uh, okay, hang on. What if I do this? Can I do this? Maybe I can't assign arrays like this. Okay, now what is deaths of U.S.? Okay, that should have worked then. Um, deaths of I is BC key is deaths. Um, no, that should work. So BC key of deaths is mm, the sucker. And so this should reverse all the freaking values. Uh, Angola. Nope. <coughs> Excuse me. So why that not be working? We're so close. Um, so now this should actually return nothing, which is what I expected. Uh, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. So the only thing I can think of is maybe reverse actually reverses the array itself. Nope. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's not suppress the output. Hmm. That does not look good. <coughs> so maybe I've added too many... Huh. That's not what that's supposed to return. Um... Oh, shoot. Is BC keys not actually returning what I want it to return? It may not be. Hang on. 
it may be returning something that's nested too deep. Um, and in some cases, insanely deep, apparently. Wait a minute. Every time I run this, does it get worse? No, but... Okay, so let's take a quick look at array info depth to see what kind of hideousness this is giving us. Hmm. Um. Okay, so Zambia, this is the one that should give us the right result. But why do we have, like... Um. That's kind of weird. Alright, I'm gonna, let's take a look at that from the beginning. Um, we'll go ahead and define these functions, but let's, immediately after we define Matt, let's take a look at him. Um, gosh, I hope that was correct. Okay, that looks fine. It looks good so far. Looks a little ugly, but I think we can live with it. <coughs> um, so this should now create for every element in mat, which is kind of weird because we actually have, um, for example, this thing is going to be um, exist several times, and I'm starting to wonder if that is the problem. Um, huh. Let's see what that does. Alright, so now let's take a look at the, um, so far I'm not seeing a problem. Um, Everything looks to be a single, a single. The only kind of weirdness is um, we're nested in one level, which I don't think is a good idea. Um, but okay. Um, let's see. BC list to string I2. What is that? Is that returning an array? Um, in some cases. I mean, S concat should, um, um, that should not be causing, pro Zambia we know is, a, is one that causes a problem, but, um, <coughs> excuse me, that was a sneeze, you don't have COVID yet. Unless you already had it, of course, and then you still have it. Can't can't undo it. Okay. So, so far it looks like I haven't screwed things up too badly. And the next step we do here is we push a bunch of stuff onto death's BC list. Okay. So maybe it's the reverse step that does everything kind of weird. Okay. So now I'd still like to get array info of deaths. Still looking pretty good. So I think maybe it's the reversal step that screwed things up. Um, so what does BC keys of death do? That. Z, plural. Okay. Oh, that's ugly. So this is bad because the keys are actually things like this. But what I'm getting back here is BC keys death is giving me are those things wrapped inside of an array. That's where we're getting the duplication, the, the nesting. Um, okay. Array info to... Oh, shit. Um, so, array info of deaths. 
Okay, and it's very nice. It has, oops, hang on. That's probably not cool. So even array info is giving out nested elements where it shouldn't be. And array info 2 I don't think is going to do any better. I mean, it can't. Um, huh. So we have a list of lists. And I, I don't know if I want to fix it right here, but BC Keys definitely needs to fix it. Um, array info 2, L, and that is going to give us So what is this sucker here? It is a list of lists. Um, so now I could, in theory, transpose this and then take the first element of the transposition, and that just doesn't work at all. Because it's not what I really want. I want the um, Can I flatten this? Oh, I should be able to just flatten this, shouldn't I? Yeah, let's do that. Booyah! And it's actually now small enough to be um, displayed on the screen. Okay, so that's what I want. So we'll leave Array Info and Array Info 2 the way they want, but then we will flatten this sucker. I'll redefine this function. And now, just to make sure it works, BC Keys of Deaths is... Yay. Is now a list of keys, not a list of list of keys, if that made sense. And if it did, please let me know, because it didn't make sense to me. Okay. Do we have what we want at last? We finally do. That is dead people in the United States. No, no. We have the list in the correct order. Still not great, because it would be nice to use a different variable so we didn't keep reversing something in place. But, you know, whatever. Uh, Singapore. Very, very nice. Deaths in the U.S. Um, <sighs> now, I think all of the, um, the deaths are going to be the same length. Um, I think we've, even for countries that didn't have deaths on the very first day, um, Oh, we do. So they should all be 85, and tomorrow they'll be 86, obviously. Um, oh, actually, I think tomorrow has occurred now, because it is actually past midnight. I don't know if they'll have the data quite quite this early, but let's take a look here anyway. Um, go to this. COVID-19. Uh, let's see if they have any new data for us. Oh, they might have, actually. Okay, so... Now, there's something I do with my Mathematica um, files where I can load in just the functions I want and still have the rest of them uh, in, you know, in... Um, still have the rest of <coughs> them in a file, but not have to run them necessarily. And I call that math2. Um... And all it basically does is it just very trivially sucks out the portion of the uh, of the file between the uh, word formulas and end formulas. Uh, so it's not a huge thing. Um, so let's see if we can do that for this. Those aliases would be defined here. And I think I'm going to define it right next to math2. Assuming that I... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll just call this Maxima2. Um, it starts with the formulas, blah, 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 T to Maxima start. Now, the only really interesting part here is how, we, how we're going to run it. Uh, and that I think that it's R Maxima, and we figured this out last time. R Maxima, yeah, there we are. Minus, minus, init equal 
temp maximum start. Um, okay. Now the only other thing here is we might at some point uh, want to start making the uh, creating a BC lib dot Mac uh, maximum start. We should probably call this dot Mac just to be consistent. Okay. So now over here we can put the formulas we do want to load in, which are going to be between. Um, I always forget if I said formula or formulas, but let's go with it. Okay, so now we get now we can a very easily sort of get in and out as we need uh, after we do a source of aliases of BC git aliases, unless it complains. Maxima two. Um, tilde bc get maxima bc covid dot mac. And if that worked, I will be very surprised. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so I did get pretty far here. Uh, let's see if it's defined BC keys of X. No, it has not. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, maxima2, so we should have created a file called uh, maxima start.mac. Looks like this. That looks like a perfectly valid file to start with. And then what did I do wrong then? So our maxima minus minus init equals temp maxima start dot mac. That seemed to have come out a lot better than the other one. Okay, still didn't work. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hang on. Temp maximum start dot max. Let's make sure this is actually what I think it is, but it should be. Yeah, it looks like that should all work. Um. Hello, 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 ISO optolinear. I'm still not dead yet. I'm working on it. Um, you know, the, the number of deaths in the U.S. is increasing. Um, pretty soon everyone will be dead. I'll probably go before you. That's my, that's my goal. Um, just so you can mourn my passing and I don't have to mourn yours. Oh, nice. So you got it. I think you were lying about this earlier, though. You got it. You got over it. You have antibodies and you're going to ignore the fact that some people are getting it more than one time. So if that's all true, you're, you're good to go. Uh, you wasn't lying about it. OK, sure you wasn't. Um, OK, so you got over it. Whatever. That's cool. Um, so I am working on uh, COVID-20, which is an improvement on the virus. Uh, so, if, you know, I'll send it to you first to see if you can get over that one, too. So just ca kind of keep going. Oh, shit. I wonder if it puts the .Mac extension by itself. It does. Oh, shit. That didn't work. You're welcome. I try to do that. I try to help out my friends, you know? Um, and you, and I try to help out you as well. Ha ha ha, I'm so funny. Okay, I think I know what I did wrong now. I think it has to be this. There we go. And by the way, in case you're wondering here, the number of deaths in the United States. Okay, so I need to change that alias a little tiny bit because it adds .mac to the end of it by itself. Aside from that, doing pretty well here in terms of 
uh, in terms of whatever the hell it is I was doing. Uh, so let's see, maxima 2. Oh, I need to do a source tilde. BC get aliases again. And it's maxima 2, BC get maxima BC COVID. There we go. All right, so now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a real quick, um, real quick and dirty uh, uh, plot of this. And I'll make a note here. I um, think it's disp2d. Was it just disp? I don't think that's what disp is supposed to do. Okay, it's not disp, but there is something else we can do. It's um, draw two D. Uh, gives point based plot of of array. So let's do that. Draw two D. And there you have it. Um, looks kind of stupid. Um, uh, log scale. I don't even think you need to see log y equals true. I think we just say log y. Whoa. Points 2D. Do I need to say log e equals true? Because that would be kind of annoying. Okay, I know I've done this before. Points, deaths. I could have sworn I just did log e before. All right, let me try something. It is Pomodoro time, but since my good friend Isooptilator is here, I don't know who he is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip Pomodoro. Uh, Isooptilator, please feel free to uh, free me from this boredom and we can do something else if you want to learn about what I'm doing. Anything you want. Um, um, okay. Um... And let's see how I did. I, I know I did log y before, so this is not a huge. Um, oh, apparently you cannot use log y with, um, well, you can, but not in a good way. And so let's not do that. You can with plot 2D, but the big problem here is um, you unquestionably need to have uh, two array. You need to have an array that um, comes with the list. So transpose. Yeah, you can't. You need you need two arrays. You need one x and one y. You can't just implicit the y-axis. In fact, we probably need to do that here anyway. So we need to do a little bit better here. Um. Because if we're going to start taking portions of this, we actually do need to have them them labeled. So what can we do here? Um, um, let's see. Uh, for example, we want to change this into 1 comma 0, 2 comma 0, 3 comma 0, all the way up to 85 comma 10. Um, and that might be a worthwhile function called index list. So that might be something we could create as a function. Um, and index to an existing list. I, I get the feeling I shouldn't be bc add index to list set equal to so that's just going to be basically make list 
Um, that's actually not too bad. Uh, I L of I, where I goes from 1 to length of the list. That looks a little bit too easy. Let's see what that does. So let's see if I want to add an index to 1, 2, 3, 4, which is not going to be very exciting. There it is, yeah. So now let's try it with something interesting. This. That's not bad, actually. I mean, that worked way better than I thought it would. So now that I have that, I can do draw 2D with uh, that. Something I couldn't do with a single... Um, no, I'm sorry, I can do plot 2D with this. And, ooh. No, I can't. Um, all right, let's see why I can't do that. I thought it was pretty damn cool. Oh, I need the word discrete in front of it, that's why. Um, now this, this actually may not work for a different reason. Okay. Yep, so that's actually, that's a good function, but doesn't do what we need. Um, So what we really need is just a, a range uh, that gives us the number of days. Um, huh. Uh, that's not ugly. That is ugly. I think that's just the transpose. For some reason, this doesn't seem to think doesn't seem to know what a transpose is. This is not a transpose. Um, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to need two separate lists here one that are the x-coordinates, one which are the y-coordinates. So I think we can do that in a very simple way that's not, not at all interesting. Um, I goes from 1 to length of death. We'll just say you, it doesn't really matter because they're all the same. So I'm unhappy now. Let's just do this again. And now we should be able to do something like plot 2D discrete days. Oh, it occurred to me I could actually do this as a function. But anyway, plot 2D would work better. Really? Range must be of the form. Okay, that does not seem correct. <sighs> Discrete days deaths. Yeah, and that looks like it is... Oh. Right. Like this. And there we have it. The number of deaths increasing very quickly, unless, of course, we logify. And then we'll see that we have sort of a very steep increase here. Sort of gotten out, then it sort of comes up again. Now it's starting to level out. Um, so in theory, we can do this. But if we do this, the problem is I don't know how to get back from this to the previous um, zoom level. Okay. Yeah, I was really kind of hoping we could get it from um, the index list, because that would be nice if we just wanted to plot, for example, the uh, last the last few uh, the last few days. 
which I'm sure we could do anyway. Well, we might we might be able to do that anyway. So now, all right, so let's take a look at the deaths in China, which, by the way, are going to look really strange because um, presumably they haven't had any recently, not that I would believe them. And uh, let's see how we're doing in Canada. Um, again, this is essentially zero here. Sort of a, a wobbly little uh, increase. Okay. Um, now, the one thing this doesn't have, I don't think, is I don't think we can do New Mexico because I don't think they break it down at state level. Except I'm wrong, and they do. Um, so this is the uh, curve for New Mexico. I didn't know they actually had this. That's very nice. Um, and you're a part of New Mexico, I saw after later. I mean, you're in New Mexico. I don't know if you're a, like a physically a part of it. Uh, it does look like we have a, a very nice asymptote showing us that you know we're going to probably level off right at about 100. But I'm actually, I didn't know we had that, actually. Um, okay, so now I'm confused as to how we got that data in here. Uh, okay, hang on. Something suspicious here. Okay, now something's wrong with this, um, apparently. Um, this might just be, uh, l this might actually just be plotting the numbers from 1 to 100 I in a weird log way. So the way to check that is to get rid of this, and yeah. Okay, so nope, sorry, no data on New Mexico or New York. Uh, let me check to see if we have that data. I don't think we do, unfortunately. Um, the data package. Oh, actually we might. Um, key countries pivoted. Okay, I wonder what the hell that is. Oh, okay. Pivot table meaning showing for the main countries in a different form. I would call that a transpose. Uh, U.S., let's see, worldwide aggregated, uh, time series, COVID, right, so this is what we're looking at. Is world an op, no, wait, why the hell is the world not an option? Ooh, hang on. Oh, what are we using here? What file are we using? We are using, um countries aggregated. So should we be using this instead? It's a little bit deeper. All right, hang on. What is world? See, worldwide aggregated is like, oh, so these are the total numbers. Okay. I mean, we could compute the worldwide aggregated just by adding up the countries and the assumption that Everyone dies in a country. U.S. confirmed. Okay. Um, okay. And these are just various cities and stuff. Okay, so we could get more detailed information, but this is not too bad. What we have right now... Um, now I'm wondering if we can do, I don't think this is going to work. So deaths of here is, uh, I don't know, um, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and its empires. Whoa. Okay. What, is the United Kingdom just called the United Kingdom? Nope. Um... Mm, Let's do Canada. Canada. Now, I, in theory, there's a way to do this so that you can do more than one at a time, but I don't think this is it. Um, you can show multiple graphs on top of each other. Yeah, no. Um, but street, days. Canada. So this will be the, okay, and then maybe, I wonder if you can put this inside of an array. Okay, and then 
you might be able to say discrete days deaths US or apparently you cannot do that unless I say the word discrete correctly here oh that's kind of nice yeah okay as you can see we are as always way beyond Canada in everything including the number of deaths due to COVID this is a good this is a good thing to have because it's a nice um, it's a nice scratch note here that says you can um, you can do more than one plot at a time. Um, the other thing I wanted to do uh, I mean we could continue with this and in fact we could even sort of start looking at you know if the U.S. growth is exponential what does it look like um, if it's if it's linear what does it look like that sort of stuff and we could even apply it to like just the last few days instead of instead of since day one or day zero um, but the other thing I wanted to look at right now we're seeing a lot of maps out there that are not adjusted for population uh, so what we need to do is we do need to adjust these maps uh, from for population um, and how do we do that I think if I Oh man, somewhere I've got this. I don't think this is it though. Worldwide countries aggregated, key countries pivoted. I think even this won't give give me what I want. Um, although this might be a good, we'll put this on our to-do list because this is actually probably a better uh, data series to be using. Wait. Oh, this actually gives us the um, country, province, lat long, confirmed. Oh, this is actually a much nicer. I don't know why the hell I wasn't using this or originally. We'll go ahead and put that, though, as a to-do. Um, to use this much nicer file, to use this much nicer file, um, instead of the one we're using, which doesn't have quite as much data. So this would actually be, I wonder if this has New Mexico in it. This one might actually have New Mexico. Or NM, or wait, United United States, USA, US. Come on, seriously. Apparently, they separated out the United States, but this apparently has at least so in some cases, it does break it down to the uh, to the province level. Um, for example, in Australia, it breaks it down to the state level, which is kind of nice. Okay. Now, the other piece of data we have, which is from the um, World Health Organization. Let's go ahead and do a git pull. Um, okay. COVID. Now, I always forget where this data is. It's in here somewhere. Um... And let's take a look here. And I think this is not what we want. Um, yeah, this is just a list of the... There's actually some place where it actually gives us, I think, death by death. That sounds so nasty. Um... I think over here it'll actually tell us day by day not only um, not just the number of deaths but the location of the deaths um, province region um, okay this um, this I think the data gets a lot better, the more recent data gets a lot better. Yeah, because it has FIPS, Admin 2, Province, all this good stuff here. Uh, that gives you latitude and longitude. Um, but I guess that doesn't go back all the way. Active combined key. The cool thing here is we could, in theory, use the latitude and longitude, and then use the 
the, what we know about our population density, because we do have that data as well, and divide the number of deaths by the population density to get a, a much more reasonable estimate of how many people are dying in a given region, as opposed to giving totals, which are not really uh, very representative because uh, larger populations will have larger numbers of deaths. So um, this would be the thing that would be useful. We do actually, I think we have this right here. Do we have this um, population data? Oh, where do I have my population data? I may not have it here. We can definitely put it here. Um, let's see. I'm going to find it on my other machine, and I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um, and so let's see. So we do have that data down to the 30 second mark, uh, meaning half of a minute or 1 20th of a degree. Uh, so what we could do is we take these numbers, multiply them by 120, and then sort of compare the number of deaths. Um, and this, for this, we don't necessarily need maximal. We could use Perl for this. Um, compare the number of deaths that we're getting in a given region to the population of that region. And I, I don't know how well that's going to work, because 30 seconds of arc um, is, yeah, is about one kilometer, actually less than a kilometer at the equator. And so some of the, I don't know, for example, Adams, Ohio, this probably encompasses more than a single kilometer area. Uh, I don't, I don't think, so it, it, we still might get some clustering that we don't want necessarily uh, that to occur. It is Pomodoro time. I'll be back in two and two.
almost back. And we are back. Just checking on a couple of things here. According to this, I am live and offline, but I get the feeling that is not correct. I'm pretty sure I am live and online. Okay, um, so we're going to take a quick look now to see if I can find where I have data on population count and density, which are not available from each other because the amount of people don't live on water, essentially, is the, is the issue. Uh, so let's, let's just take a quick look here. I don't know if I have this in a form I can use it. Um, and if I don't, I'm not exactly sure how to get to it uh, to find the, you know, the um, population count or density at a given location. But I'm taking a quick look here to see if I can find something that might have that data for me. Um, and apparently I do not. Let me see if I can go ahead and link this in. I thought it was already linked in, but uh, but maybe not. Um, actually, I could have sworn I had it linked in because uh, because I did want to use it at one point. Okay, but let's take a look here. Um, give me one second here while I look to see what I do have linked in. Um, quite a bit of crap, but not all the crap that we need. So let me go ahead and link that in. I don't think I've got anything private in here. I, I wouldn't expect to. Um, okay. So now we can go over here and look at our population data. A lot of crap here. Let's test through that. I don't think I have it in a format that's very usable, though. I think this is the... Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, that's not what I wanted at all. Um... Population density ident revision. Um, yeah, it would be nice if I had. Do I do have readmes in here? Don't no, I do not even have a readme in here, so I have no idea what any of this stuff is. All right, let's see. What is test two? This is, should just be like a um, standard population density map, as you would expect. Um, If I do this correctly, we should be able to find nothing. Somewhere in there is the city of Albuquerque, but I don't know where. Okay. Um, yeah, I do not think I have anywhere in here. Let's take a look at the biggest files here and see what I do have. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This. Test three. And I think the problem here is converting this to a... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not what I want either. Um, I think the problem here is there's so many different values for population um, count and density... Uh, that I could not find an easy way to sort of convert them into a nice, easy binary file. So this is um, uh, count. So this is how many values have minus 999, meaning no data. This is the number of values have zero, probably the ocean where no one lives. And these are all the remaining values, 1.140. So th these numbers occur quite often inside of... Um, Okay. Somewhere in here I actually do have a conversion to text. Um, data unique C. Uh, this might be just another version of the same thing we saw earlier. Uh, the number of times various different numbers appear in the data. Um, and, oh, here we are. Uh, revision 11 for 2020 in the ASCII format. This is, okay, this is what we 
we don't really want it because it's actually very very ugly even in compressed form but but this is the this has the data we want uh, revision 11 30 second tip uh, wait 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 no 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 um, there should be an ASCII version here somewhere okay and this is going to be basically the um, I'll show you what the format here is um, each of these represents a single latitude and the top left corner is minus 180 and y left corner is essentially zero and then these are basically going to be all unfortunately the first few lines are going to be very dull um, but if you went through this you would find um, this is line 10 you will find values that are not garbage uh, so what this is is the population count in each of these given squares um, if if these squares are fully land we could compute the population density because we know how big each of these chunks are but we don't actually have um, but we don't actually know how much of them are land and how much is water and of course we only count people on land even though there's probably some people uh, living on um, boats and stuff. So this is again the density would be revision 11. Ooh. This is actually a TIFF file. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, like this for example is not going to show up because this is not a TIFF in the sense of the word um, this is not a TIFF in the sense of the of an image. It's actually a bunch of information. Now QGIS will bring this up. Um, I hope. And and when you're in QGIS, you can do all. Yes, we know. Um, I don't really want any more tips. Now this should bring up. Yes, yes, yes. Unfortunately, this is such a huge, nasty program that it you can't really shrink it down too much and still have it work. You can do it a little bit, though. Um, so, okay. So now what you can do here, um, if you go to View, uh, Identify Features, Layer, oh yeah, it's Layer, Show Hide Properties, I think that's what I want. Yeah, here we go. So right now we just have this going black to white, blah, blah, blah. We can do better than that. We can do um, multi-band color, actually palleted. Mm. Here we go. Single band pseudo color. So the values go from 0 to 627.597. Um, if we do classify, this we want to reverse that actually. Um, we'll now see that between 0 and 156 will be in blue, 156 to 313 will be in. This is not going to be very exciting though because most of the world has very low population density. So what we've really done is um, color most of the world blue. Um, we can do a little bit better than that by raising this number to I think 255 is the max it will go. And this is actually really hard to notice with 255 because it's a very slow fade from um, blue to red. I think there's a better one for this. Um, random colors is actually kind of fun. We're not going to do it, but we'll, we might in a sec. Okay, so what this does is now it's a little bit nicer if we apply. Um think it's taking a few seconds and then uh, maybe I'm screwing something up classify apply there we go and here we see that um, you may see a little bit more color now we probably don't want equal interval because again so much of the world is very not densely populated there is a clever way Um, 
there's a clever way that I don't know how. You can actually change all of this to be whatever you want it to be. So um, we'll say, for example, give us 16, classify, uh, apply. And again, most of the world's going to end up between 0 and 41. Uh, so it's very low, but we can change that. We can, for example, here, nope, value 0. Here we can say the value is 10, for example. Make this 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So now this might actually give us a little bit of a, a little bit less blue on the screen because it's giving us, um, it's turning to non-blue people areas that have population of greater than 10. I don't know what the 10 is. I think it's people per square mile. Uh, but let's see if we can do better than that, actually. Let's see if we can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is going to turn a lot of the world red now because anything with over 15 will be red. But um, it'll also do a better job of showing areas that have lower population density but not not zero population density um, so i don't know how helpful that is but there you go um, if you want to go crazy with it you can do random and again you'll see this is um, again most of the world's going to end up in whatever the first color is so the question I was having here, the thing I was trying to do earlier, a lot earlier, let me get rid of this, um, a lot earlier is I wanted to look to see if we could sort of keep this information in a way that we could, we could get a hold of it. In other words, easily access the population count of a given, of a given, you know, pixel, a given one half degree by one half degree um, square. Uh, one way to do that is to use a database, uh, of course. Um, the other way to do this um, is to basically try to, well, I mean, this would effectively be a database, but it'll be much tighter. It just use a, a file that has um, a representation of the number for every given grid point, and then maybe store it in a squash FS to, so it doesn't use up as much room. So that would be the kind of goal here um, and that's one reason to look at these things, count data, is it this, oh, I see, this is count, not uh, density. So the population count here, and the, and the, the issue here is going to be basically um, how many different values we have. We have this many different, 24 million, 296, 523 different values. Um, and that would require to store about 24, about a little over 24 bits. Um, so we would need a file that is 43,200 43, times that number over a half, because that's how many uh, north to south, how many latitudes we have, multiplied by about, well, let's call it four bytes. So that is a pretty big looking file there. That is, um, no, it's not. That's a tiny file, 1.2 gigabytes. Hmm, I'm curious now. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe it isn't that bad. Um, I guess each of these numbers could be, could be, is a floating point. I mean, it has to be. And all I need to do is find the floating point representation of these numbers, stick them in there, and then figure a way to get them out of floating point. Now, the floating point representation is not as obvious as you might think it is, because floating point can store a lot of numbers from being very, very big to being very, very small. However, it should be figurable outable. Can't do the unique C sorted. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, for some reason, the most frequent population density is this sucker. Okay. Um, so now, now I'm beginning to wonder if we could actually um, figure out how to store and unstore this data if we knew how to convert from numerical form uh, into 4-bit, 32-bit, 4-byte floating point, assuming that's what these are. Um, and one thought I had was to basically try to multiply the smallest one of them uh, by, and then the largest one, 
um, by a certain number um, which could work. Um, let's see. These are not sorted correctly, though. Hang on. There's a, there's a way. That, there's a place where they are sorted uh, in order of size instead of order of number. Uh, maybe that's not it either, though. Okay. All righty. Fortunately, I don't know what this is, and I don't have a README file here, so kind of nice to know what the hell this is coming out of. Um, I also have multiple copies of everything for different um, for different zones and stuff. I think I combined all of them at one point. Uh, okay, and test one and test three might actually be my attempts uh, to have um, to have binarized them. Okay, it is Pomodoro time. I will be back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. Let me... I've never... I don't think I've ever tried this. Let me find the smallest value in here. Um... This should not be possible. There should not be a negative population anywhere. We don't have negative people. We don't allow them, man. Um, oh, this is actually sorted, so... Actually... Um, actually, I don't know if the sorting is accurate for the... Uh, for the... Um, For the ease, I don't think that even sort minus, I don't think this understands the engineering format, so. Okay, that is a pretty small number, though. So let's let's take a look at this real quick. Um, and I guess the question is, is there anything larger than, um, yeah, these numbers are not sorting correctly, obviously, because we're jumping between... Um, zeros and fives. Um, so the thing to do here would be substitute everything up to the E. Um, and then just sort this, which should be fairly short, uh, sort this uniquely Okay, so minus zero one two does seem to be the smallest value, uh, this guy, and the largest value. Okay, I keep forgetting which one is which, but the the largest value is going to be the other, uh, really big thing, which is I think is count data unique C sort. Uh, maybe it's not, except for minus nine ninety nine, which is we're going to treat as being special. So, sort minus K two N R. This is going to take a second. So, yeah. So, this is the range that we have. 
Um, and we don't necessarily know that every number is going to be a multiple of this either, but that, I'm kind of willing to assume that. So this would be this number over, that should be a positive, but OK. This number times 10 to the negative 12th. Which is that number, which is a hell of a lot of bits. It's actually not that many bits. It's 57.3 bits, which we could probably get away with uh, 64 bits. So we probably could solve this all by just, um, that's interesting actually. Um, the other way to do it is to, to find the floating point representation of these numbers and how to get back and forth between them. Um, the floating point for byte representation, there should be a Perl thing that does it. Um, the, is there, let's just see if Perl, the, the pack function might just incidentally do that. Um, um, precision, ooh. A float of a double long, long double precision in native format. Um, interesting. So maybe PAC just does this implicitly. Um, so pack and unpack might just end up doing this. Um, so let's take a look here. This could be a little bit too easy. Print pack in what they're calling double long format unsigned long, but we want it as floats or, or double precision values as we would call them. A double precision float in native format. I think that should be okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so the octal dump looks like this. Um, I guess the only real question is, um, if we go the other direction, do we get our number back? And can I cut and paste this piece of crap? Oh, apparently I can. Nope, just want to see what it is. Whoa! So that's the whole secret there is pack and unpack D. Okay. But now let's see you pack minus 1e e to the minus 12th. Okay. This is probably the stupidest thing I'm ever going to do. No, I'm just kidding. It won't be. Hmm. There must be a time when we end up losing precision, though, because um, um, and I guess the other question would be: Are there always going to be? Because this looks like it's only four characters, and we definitely need to have eight to. Uh, so it works, basically. Okay, so we're going to lose precision here. Beyond my knowledge of pi. Yeah, so we do eventually lose some precision there. Um, but okay. 
Um, so I guess we could even use like the left fill of pack to do this. Oh, what does this do? This probably is... Yeah. Um, and that's only two characters long. No, wait. Nine? <gasps> Gorgeous! So these are going to all be eight characters. The nine is because of the new line. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. So is this something I... I'm pretty sure I've never used Pack D in, in Pearl. Uh, I'm going to go take a quick look to make sure that I haven't, but I, I get the feeling that that this is much, much easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so let's take a quick look here. Uh, I'm on the other machine because it is a little bit faster here. Um, um, looking to see where I use pack. And I'm, I'm almost sure I've never used it with D. Um, pack C, have used pack H2, which is hex. Um, which kind of makes me wonder if I could use... Now, now I'm getting into the part that's unnecessarily stupid. Could I pack this as hex? Oh, but I get the feeling then if I did something like this... Yeah. Um, unpack pack wouldn't give me the same... Then, yeah, so I couldn't... I couldn't really pack it like... Um, let's see what H2 does. Again, I don't think this is going to work. Um... This is not going to give me back my number. Right, because this is not meant to be packing floating points. Okay, so that's actually really, really nice. Um, wow. I mean, I am impressed with myself. Not with myself. With, um, with Pearl. And I'm still looking a little bit to see if there's any place where I've done this, but I, I don't think I have, actually. Um, okay. And the only the only bugaboo here will be... Um, well, no, I guess minus... Okay, now this, this one I'm going to be careful with. Let's see. Can I do minus one? And I get the feeling this is not going to unpack correctly, because it thinks of this as a floating point. I'm wrong. Gorgeous. Kind of curious how these comes out, but I don't care if it'll do it. Um. Alright, I'm going to see one more thing here before we write some code. Hmm. Um. Okay. Um. Apparently I wrote a C program to do this, but, um. I'm looking at the C program. I don't think even the C program does this the way... Um, yeah, the C program only works for, for integers, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Using... Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, that only works for integers. All right, boys and girls, let's let's rock and roll. Let's do some programming. So it's going to be BCAAI to bin Perl. And we, as always, we will use my library. Okay. Um, so what's interesting-ish here... 
don't know. I don't think I have any programs in Pro that deal with AAI. So, um, the weird thing is we don't even actually need to keep track of of the header rows because we're going to write everything out as an 8-bit float, which is not great, but certainly doable. Um, okay. So Biggins doesn't work here, so I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, so hang on a second here. So it's test1.text. Uh, okay, now I'm kind of not sure as to how I got this. It'd be so nice if I be so so nice if I knew how I did all this crap. Um, let me look at some of the smallest files we have here, the ones that might actually be shell scripts. Um, yep. Yep, 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 nothing useful. All right, so we have Okay, so I think the cool thing is here we can use the ones that are actually, um, that they give us, because uh, I don't really want to be using my own. Revision 11. <laughs> so unique C. So this tells me how many times each thing occurs. Um, but that's not what I want. Um, this is what I think I want. Z cat of this. I'm going to Z less it for right now. Okay. And I guess I can go commando on this in the sense that um, I can just ignore the header values and just go line by line. That just seems so weird. Um, okay, well, let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to ignore lines that start with a letter. Uh, so if um, you're starting with a... Now, i got to be careful because minus is an acceptable character. Um, if you're starting with... This is actually not the best way to do this, but, you know. Okay. And then we'll say my calls equal split on any number of spaces dollar sign and this should not be too spammy um, how many columns there are as always we have to do some magic here to get this to work Perl fix which means make everything executable which I probably could have done on the other machine probably should have rehash you see AEI grid to bin dot PL minus minus debug shouldn't do anything because it's waiting for input. Um, Z, Z cat. Z cat. And let's see what this does. Yep, 10,800 columns. It's going very, very quickly. I mean, it's not doing anything, but I mean, you know, that's kind of besides the point. Um. For dollar sign J calls. Um, this is almost insanely easy. Now, obviously, we're not going to be able to. Um, this is going to be garbage to us, but let's take a look. Tiny. All right, now let's just temporarily put it into, and I know we're, because we're running on an amount, we really shouldn't be, we should be doing it on the other machine, but you know, let's just see how long this takes. And more importantly, how big temp pop count dot bin is. And then the other really important issue will be, can we read data back from it? So this is taking a good chunk of time here. And we are expecting it to be 
times 21,600 times 8 bytes, so we are expecting it to be wait, 8 gigabytes in size. That should be fun. Um, and that is 724 megabytes in size right now, so it's going to take some time. Um, ooh. No way in hell that worked. Okay. That is not the number of... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 sorry. Four bytes, I think, is what I meant. No, two bytes? One byte? Okay. That seems a little bit strange. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that's more than one byte. Um, Pomodoro time back in tune two. Okay, we're almost back, and we're back. Okay, so what went wrong there? Let's take a look. Um, it's quite possible this thing does not actually cover the area that I think it does. Oh, 10,000 meters, so this is uh, minus 180. Okay, cell size is this. I'm beginning, I think I see the problem. But let's make sure. So that number times 10,800 is going to be 90 degrees. Uh huh. So this only covers a quarter of the Earth. Uh, so I'm unhappy about that. Um. Oh sh. Sec. Oh, this is just section three. God. Uh, let's see. Sec. That's two. I, I think I would need to probably read the readme at some point, but um, so this is sections one through eight. Mm, let's go ahead and read the readme. Um, I thought that everything would be in the one file. Ah, uh, that's that's nice. Just do a pointer to the documentation. Um. Okay, let's go ahead and look at these, um, and let's see, maybe, maybe if they're all the same size, there is something, obviously, uh, okay, population density, population count revision 11, this should be, I did do, yeah, I did do population count, right, the density ones are broken into sections, um, though it's not apparently obvious that's true either. Um, section one, section two, section three, section four, but this should be all of them, so why is that not working? All right, 
So let's just look at this one, which presumably is for 2020, the population density file. And once again, this is yeah, 10,800 times cell size is this, so that gives us 90 degrees. Uh, that is not correct. Um, the only thing I can think of is I somehow downloaded these incorrectly. Um, I mean, they're not of lower resolution either. They're just, they're just freaking wrong. Let's see if there's a readme here that isn't stupid. Uh, apparently there is not. Let's see what this is. I think we're gonna have to go look at the instructions. Uh, and I think we might already have that. So it's V4 documentation Okay, nice try. Oh, that's also, uh, Evans should be able to unzip, fortunately. And when I said that, I meant, no, it shouldn't. Um... Okay. Let's look at the old documentation. I'm assuming it'll be pretty close to the new one. Nope, didn't want to unzip that. You want to leave into that. Okay, gridded blah 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 blah. Let's see. Okay. I could have sworn the ASCII files came from them, but now I'm beginning to wonder if maybe they did not. Um, it, maybe I created them myself. Okay. I'm pretty sure this does not do what I think it does. Okay. All right, let's see if we can find the original data. Um, and see if we can find it in ASCII form, which I could have sworn is what I wanted. Um, the nine data sets. Okay, so apparently um, for whatever reason, you apparently cannot get them at all at once. Which kind of bugs me, because I thought that's what I'd done. Uh, unless I tried to combine them in some weird way that didn't work. Which I don't remember doing. Or if I tried to convert from the TIFF. Um, which might be the case. Uh, so let me, let me, I might have converted from the TIFF, which should have worked actually, but, um, let's see what ends with TIFF. Okay. All right. Let's take a quick look to see what the hell this pop count thinks it is. Okay. 43,200 by 21,600. Um, it's complaining about stuff. Now, in theory, uh, I'm not going to do this here if this works, but I'm just test it to see if it works. I should be able to do pop count text, and let's see what that does. And pop count text should be like a pixel by pixel representation. If it works, it should be a pixel by pixel representation. Okay, hang on, I can't do this here. That's that was ridiculous. Um, it should give me all the values, but I, I get the feeling it's going to be weird. Hmm. I'm annoyed by this. Uh, 
Rev 10 2020. So it's also just also grub for 2020. And okay, so this is section one section. This might be what is being weird here. I for some reason thought that this one, no, not this one, uh, one of them would actually be the whole thing. But apparently it's at lower resolution, or actually it's not the whole thing at all. Um, maybe I glued these together or something? I don't know. Oh, actually that's a good thing to look at. Um, yeah, maybe that's the problem. Or, hang on, this might actually be, yeah, my mistake. This is just a zip of all of them. And because of the way this, they're not, combining them is not trivial. Um, because these are these are eight separate sections of the world and the eight separate sections are are not you can't they're not you can't layer them you basically got to go um can you hang on uh, maybe we can actually all right hang on i mean if we know how um Okay, now. Okay. Uh, so we need to Z cat this. Oh. That's BZ cat, actually. Actually, might as well do BZ less. And um, so this is zero to zero. This is the, where the equator meets the prime meridian. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you could. There's. You can't really stripe them like this. I mean, wouldn't be too hard to find out. Um, We're how to put we could put them together one after the other and then the program that reads them could know where each chunk is so that's not it's not it's not fatal that we couldn't do it this way um, it would just require a little bit more work to keep track of which uh, quasi quadrant we were in um, because there's eight of these suckers uh, and you need to know where in the eight of these suckers you are when you do the computation. So let me actually take a quick look here and see if we can do on the other machine I'm going to try to um, convert popcount.tiff to popcount.text and see what that does. Um, and it's going to be hideous. In fact I need to make sure I have enough space for that. 170 gigs I should be okay um, but you never know. And what that should do, if it works, is give me a very, very detailed...